All right, hello everybody. This is going to be the pH basics if you want to find that section in the note packet. Um, this is just, again, introduction to pH, the basic idea, the premise that you probably know from before. Um, anytime that you see P and then anything after it, it has the same mathematical function. You're going to take the negative log of whatever it is that it's asking you to find. It might be a hydrogen concentration as in pH. It might be a hydroxide concentration as in pOH. Or it might even be something called the pKa, which would then be the negative log of the acid dissociation constant value, which will, you may use in lab. Um, I'm going to come back to the sig figs note here in just a minute. As we all know, there are no calculators allowed on the multiple choice version of the AP test. So in most of those cases, if you have a situation where you have to estimate the pH of something, if you can get it down to between two whole numbers, then you'll usually be okay. So for this first exercise, let's, es let's estimate the pH between whole numbers for 5.67 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So what we have to look for then is essentially which 1 times 10 to the something, two values are we between. So if I write this number out in expanded form, that's what I get, 0. 0.0000567. That's somewhere in between if I wanted to go 1 times 10 to the something, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the upper bound of that would be 1. So this would be 1 times 10 to the negative fifth, whereas this would be 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. A moment ago, we, we looked at how to find pH. Um, so if we took the pH of this, that would be 4 for the 1 times 10 to the negative 4. And for the 1 times 10 to the negative 5, that gives you a pH of 5. If you can just get your values to somewhere between 4 and 5, you're going to be able to determine or at least get a pretty good estimate of what the, the pH could be. The other thing to look at is 5.67 is a little bit more than halfway between these two values. So this should actually be in the lower bound of 4 because you're, you're more than halfway between this power of 10 difference. So it's probably 4.2 you know, something or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the calculator. Negative log, now that I've got an estimate of 5.67 times 10 to the negative 5. And I get 4.24641 Well, that's an awful lot of numbers. So let's come back to this little significant figures note here. Use as many decimal places are there sig figs in the problem. The negative base 10 logarithm, so that basically is talking about the power, becomes the whole number, therefore only the decimals to the right are significant. In other words, the power does not count as a significant digit. Everything past the decimal point does. So in this case, this 4 represents the power. The rest of these would represent precision. So in this particular case, we have three significant um, figures as the coefficient before the times 10 to the something. My answer should have three digits after the decimal place. So it should be 4.246 would be the pH that I would calculate. Okay, so I can estimate it to between 4 and 5. And then if I can plug it in the calculator, then I do, and I want to estimate it to the correct number of significant figures. Continuing on with pH, for exercise two where we're just calculating the values, um, we want to calculate the opposing concentration um, and then state whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral. So I'm going to go ahead and have us calculate the pH or the pOH as necessary. For this one, we're given 1 times 10 to the negative fifth hydroxide concentration. So if I take the negative log of that, 
that's going to give me the POH, which is going to be negative 5. To get the hydrogen concentration, I have two possible avenues. I can either use KW, which is the hydrogen concentration times the hydroxide concentration, and solve for the missing one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for this one. So KW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 equals the hydrogen concentration times 1 times 10 to the negative 5, which would give me 1 times 10 to the negative 9 equals the hydrogen concentration molar. That would then give me the pH equals 9 and therefore that is a basic solution. The other thing that I could have done with that is I could have just used the idea of pH plus pOH equals 14. In that case then you would have pH equals 14 minus 5. Oops, that's not negative side, sorry, 5, sorry. So that would be 9. And then when you want to get the hydrogen concentration back out of this, pH is negative log of the concentration. Then the concentration equals 10 to the negative pH. So in this case, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 9. So that's just two ways to do the same problem. Both give you the same pH, both give you the same hydrogen concentration, both tell you that it's basic. Okay, for B, I'm just going to uh, give you the answer here. It's neutral. And for C, the OH concentration is, this one is a little tricky, 1 times 10 to the negative 15th molar. If you take the pH of this, you get something greater, or so you get something that's a negative value that's off the scale. Go ahead and roll with it. pH plus pOH equals 14. Um, and then so it is, it ends up being acidic. So try those out. Exercise 3 is very, very similar. Don't need a calculator probably for this one. You have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar OH minus, which would be a pOH of 3, and then would be a, PO, a pH of 11, because 3 plus 11 gives you your 14. Go ahead and at least put some work on there. And then the same thing for exercise three. One molar here. pH, you get zero. So pOH, you get 14. Try them out, make sure you get them. Okay, on to exercise number four. The answer for this one has three parts. The pOH is 6.59. The hydrogen is 3.9 times 10 to the negative eighth. And the hydroxide is 2.6 times 10 to the negative seven. Try it on your own. If you don't figure it out, come back and watch. All right, so we have pH of the sample of human blood, 7.41. To get pOH, I'm just going to subtract from 14. 14 minus 7.41 gives me 6.59. Then to get my concentrations, it's going to be 10 to the negative 7.41 which gives me the value, if I put it in the calculator, 3.9 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. And then my hydroxide concentration 
10 to the negative 6.59, which gives me the value from my calculator, 2.6 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. It is not appropriate to leave powers in this decimal format. You have to get them to a, a whole number power with a, you know, the coefficient or the number in front of the x. Okay, last topic for this session for pH is looking at strong acids and strong bases, which dissociate completely. So whenever we do these, we're talking about a single arrow, totally to the product side. We can assume that the concentration that we started with here entirely becomes the concentration of our products. So for instance, if we have nitric acid, that becomes the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion. If I started off with 0.1 molar nitric acid, all of that dissociates into 0.1 molar acid and 0.1 molar nitrate ion. To figure out the pH, I just use my acid concentration, negative log of 0.1 gives me pH, oops, I need to put that over here, pH equals this, pH equals 1. Strong bases will be awfully similar, except instead of forming an acid now, when it dissociates, this forms a base, forms hydroxide. So if I have 0.0, one, two, oops, too many zeros. 0 0.05 molar NaOH, as this dissociates, it's going to make 0.5 molar of each, and then we'll have nothing left over here. Now if I use this, think about what I'll be finding. Since I'll have pOH then, negative log of 0 0.05 is 1.301 14 minus that answer gives me 12.69897 so um, basically we have two significant figures here so we would want to say 12.70 And I suppose technically if we went back to the strong acid, since we have two significant figures in my concentration, I would want to say 1.00. And that concludes our pH.